Hello everybody, my name is Leo and this video is gonna be very interesting. We will check out the latency of 23 amp modeling pedal doors. Yes, 23. In my channel I'm getting a lot of questions about how amp modeling pedal boards feels, how they respond to our touch, etc. For sure, the feel of an amp or of an amp modeler is something personal, but in the last years, with all the reviews and comparisons that I've done in the channel and the exchange of opinions that we have had together, I've matured the idea that the feel can be articulated in three basic components that are how quickly the amp modeler responds to your touch, how it manages the dynamic range of your touch, I mean how, for instance, the amp cleans up and breaks up according to your touch, and lastly, how the modeler manages the note envelope compared to the real deal, where the note envelope is composed by the attack, decay, sustain and release of a note. Now, in this video, we will stay focused on how quickly the amp modeler responds to our touch, and therefore, we're gonna talk about latency, checking out 23 amp modelers. Therefore, a pretty massive work that has taken a lot of time and effort and that I hope you're gonna enjoy and find useful. And if so, please subscribe and ring the bell as it would really help me to make more videos like this. Let's start. Let me spend a few more words about latency. What is exactly latency and why it is so important? Well, real amps are all analog, so they respond basically immediately when we pick a note. Obviously, without considering that the sound wave produced by the speaker has to travel from the speaker itself to our ears. And this travel obviously takes time. On the other hand, all the modelers have to convert the guitar signal from analog to digital. Then they have to process the signal in order to produce the target tone, and then they have to convert back the signal from digital to analog. All these calculations that are happening inside a modeler take time. And this time is called latency. Then, once the signal has been translated once again to analog, it has to be sent to the speaker in order to be heard, like for the real amp. Now, some of us are pretty sensible to latency, and therefore they are searching for the modeler which has the faster response to their touch. Well, in this video we will check out the latency of 23 pedal boards that are Boss FX100 and GT1000, the Quad Cortex, the Fractal FM3, the Camper Stage, the Line 6 Helix, HX Stomp and Podgo, the Nuix MG30 and MG300 and the Amp Academy, the Moore G150, 250 and 300, the Zoom G11, the Valeton GP200, the Edrush Jigboard and the MX5, the Ampero and the Stomp 2, the Strymon Iridium and the Universal Audio Dream 65 and the Harley Benton DNA FX Pro. So, a massive test, I would say. Let me now describe how I have set up the test. First of all, I already did a similar video more than one year ago and in this new test I have, in my opinion, improved the methodology. Furthermore, of course, Basically, all the units have received at least a firmware upgrade and a lot of new modelers have been released. Therefore, the results have changed a lot compared to my previous video. And I have also tested a lot of new modelers. Coming back to the methodology, for this test I have used an input in my digital audio workstation. That, first of all, I have reamped, sending it again to my digital audio workstation with the cable I've used in order to feed the modelers. In this way, I have checked out if there is some latency introduced by the signal path without the modelers. And actually, there is not, as you may notice from the original impulse and the recorded wave. Then I have loaded 
in each modeler a simulation of a Fender Deluxe Reverb and the relevant cab, without anything else in the signal chain. And I have sent the aforementioned impulse from my digital audio workstation to all the modelers, recording the resulting signal coming back from each of the modelers themselves to my digital audio workstation. So finally, in my digital audio workstation, I ended up with 23 wave tracks, each one being the result of the impulse sent from my digital audio workstation to the modelers and then recording back the relevant signal. You can notice here that each first peak of each recorded wave has a specific distance from the original impulse. For instance, this peak is almost 2 milliseconds after the original signal, the original impulse, where here it is almost 3 milliseconds far from the impulse. So we can say that actually there is a latency of 2 milliseconds introduced by the first modeler and of 3 milliseconds by this other modeler. Now, this graph represents all the latencies measured for each modeler and I will now reveal which is which, starting from the modeler that introduces the higher amount of latency and then going through all of them until the modeler which has the quicker response. So in last position we have uh, Suspense uh, the Ampero Stomp 2 with around 10 milliseconds using the Ampero Stomp internal cab and this is pretty surprising but there is an insight I have found that is very interesting in my opinion and that I will reveal in few seconds. Then we have the Moore G150 with 9 milliseconds the next is the new XMG300 with 7 milliseconds. Then we have the Edrush MX5 with around 6 to 2 milliseconds. And then we have once again the Ampero Stomp 2 with the 5.6 milliseconds. So less than 10 milliseconds. Why? Well, this result is obtained using a custom IR instead of the internal cab. This is pretty interesting and this means that the internal cab of the Ampero actually requires a lot of processing power or maybe that they have to be optimized. And please notice that I have tested many modelers comparing the latency with internal cab or custom IRs and I have always found really small differences where in the Ampero Stomp 2 we have, on the other hand, a pretty important difference. Then we have the Harley Benton DNA FX Pro with 5.3 milliseconds. With around 5 milliseconds, we have the regular Ampero. With 4.7 milliseconds, the Edrush Jig Board. And with around 3.3 milliseconds, we have the Valeton GP200. Then we have the Fractal FM3 with 3.2 milliseconds, the Camper Stage with around 3.1 milliseconds and the Quad Cortex with 3 milliseconds. So the high-end modelers are pretty close in terms of latency, all at around 3 milliseconds. Very interesting. At 3 milliseconds we have also the PodGo. And then at 2.3 milliseconds we have the Universal Audio Dream 65. Then we have the Helix LT and the Zoom G11 both at 2.1 milliseconds. Then there is the new XMG30 at 2 milliseconds. And the Moore G250 and 300 at around 1.8 milliseconds. Then we find at 1.1 milliseconds the new X Amp Academy which is pretty surprising considering the price. And we are now approaching the top three. In position number three, we have the Strymon Iridium at 1.1 milliseconds. And in position two and one on pair, we have the Boss GT1000 and the GX100, both at around 0.7 milliseconds. Well, very interesting in my opinion. With pretty unexpected results, honestly. What do you think? Please let me know in the comment section below. Final considerations here. 
First of all, let me say that I'm not very sensible to latency, as I have played a lot of MIDI guitar in the past, that introduces a lot of latency, and you are obliged to adapt your playing to the latency. And honestly, I have no problem in playing any of these modelers. I play very comfortable also the Moore G150. But, as I said, some of us are very sensible to latency, and so for them, the quicker is the modeler, the more comfortably they are gonna play. Another consideration I would do is that the latency may also depend on the quality of the converters of each unit. I mean, an higher quality converter with very high bit rates or frequency could require more calculation and therefore could introduce more latency. So we actually have always to check out the converter's quality and the dynamic response in dBs of each modeler in order to verify if the ADA conversion is fast simply because the converters provide us with a lower quality. I would also mention that older modelers have had more time to evolve and refine their firmware and so they can have an advantage over younger modelers at their first iteration of the firmware. The next consideration I would do is that for some modelers the latency is related to the IR or CAB you use. This is particularly true for the Ampero Stomp 2 where the internal cabs are much slower compared to the custom IRs. Maybe because there are a lot of calculations going on for the internal cab, or simply because the algorithms have still to be optimized. Lastly, I would say that it's not strictly true that the more you spend, the quicker is the model. Because maybe the more you spend, the higher is the quality of the converters or of the algorithms and therefore their more latency is introduced. For instance, the Ampero Stomp 2 CAB's algorithms could be very sophisticated, therefore requiring more processing power. But now it's your turn. What do you think? Are these results in line with your expectation? Is the latency an issue for you? Please let me know your precious and valuable opinions and your experience with latency in the comment section below. We have now reached the end of this massive video. I hope you enjoyed and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell and leave a thumb up. It would be of a great help. If you're interested in my IRs or in my camper profiles, you can check out the link in the card above or description below, where there is also a link to the playlist of songs of mine. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.